Hello everyone, welcome back to Colonies at War. Today I'm going to be showing you a walkthrough of Russia. This is the world mm, 1835, and uh, we're Russia. This is on normal, 250 rounds. I'm just going to show you the gameplay as I play. So it's the first turn, and I have 10,000 men to work with here. I'll look around for any buildings. Looks like I don't have any in immediate proximity here. They have diamonds in Karelia. I'm not sure how vital that is. I think I'm going to go for it first, though. So I'm going to move to Karelia, and then we have our opening salary here. 600, so I think I'm going to just use this to build an attack force. So eventually I'm going to want to use cavalry in here to merge them with these and eventually just have an army of just cavalry so that I don't have to... Oh, I guess I can build a boat here. No, no I can't. So I'm going to eventually want to convert solely to cavalry at the end of the first turn so that I don't have to use infantrymen which you know would be used for defense in attacks because that would increase my casualties as opposed to you know these armies I'm not sure if it's going to show me here we go where most of them are going to be made up of soldiers which are you know more primarily used for defense so it's going to be easier for me to take those guys down if I don't use defensive troops. It's going to save me a lot in the long run. Though cavalry are more expensive to start off with. I'm going to leave... This is far inland, so I don't really need to leave that much in there. These are a little costly. I think I'm going to... I'm going to send these guys up here. And they can attack Moldavia next. Now one thing I think is very important in this game is figuring out where you want your borders to be and securing those territories as soon as possible. So I th I'm thinking I'm going to want to have a border in Urals and Pavolsky and Caucasus. So I'm going to probably take this one. It also has a university, I believe. It might be a monastery or something. So that's going to help advance my technology, so I'm going to take that first, then probably go here, then here. Might take Georgia. I'm not completely sure how the Ottomans are going to be, so that could change. That could change. And then I don't know how I am with the... Okay, well, wary. Wary. All right, so we're not bad with the uh, Prussians right now. I'm, my guess is going to be that they're going to turn on me because I'm going to be bordered with them a lot. And I'm probably going to take over Europe first. It's just going to be easier. Trust me, you, you really don't ever want to have to face the Asian powers unless you're an Asian power yourself. The territory is very rewarding, but they just have a ton of troops, a ton of resources. Not even sure if it's just what they start out with or if they just gain a lot from the land, but they get super powerful, and I just, in general, I want to avoid contact with them. So, I've moved all my armies. I always double check stuff like that. And right now, we're not in contact with any nations, but I can make a boat now to see how we are with the Ottomans. To this day, I've, you know, I've, I've read that word so many times. But I still don't know if that's pronounced frigate or frigid. I've read it in so many books. I'm guessing frigate, but... That's... I read a lot of things like that. Never really... Yeah, alright. So he's not very friendly. Um, 
let's see, I'm at five minutes now, so probably going to go till ten minutes. So next I'm probably going to take sorry, a lot of noise here. Um Caucasus? Yeah, we'll take Caucasus. I'll just use my income to secure Crimea. And then I'll take Urals, hopefully. Fortresses, so maybe not. There we go. That was high casualty, though. Usually I'd attack with cannons, but we don't really have any income, which is why I gotta take territory fast here. So I'm gonna wanna secure Pavolsky and Urals with fortresses and troops in the next following turns and basically build up a border and once I have a border I can focus more on attacks but right now you don't want to get stabbed in the back you want to get a decent income from this land but you want to cover your cover your retreat I guess you could say So I'm going to merge these two armies in here, because Pavolsky is a little, a little well guarded. That should do fine. And then next turn, I'm just going to transfer the rest of those infantry into defending that area. All right, we're at seven minutes now. Turn five. I was hoping to get more turns done, but the thing you don't ever factor in is how long it takes to think, even when you know what you're doing. All right, this should be good because I'll have another turn to reinforce them before I even have to face any of these guys. I'm not even gonna try to <laughs> pronounce any of these, <laughs> any of these names. Um, so, probably not going to start attacking yet. I'm just going to use these turns to build up income. But I'm going to move these guys over here because you never really know with these guys. Especially, especially the Austrians. I have trouble with them everywhere. You'll, you know, you, you'll be friends with the Prussians from time to time. The Austrians will always come back to bite you. I just don't like people, I don't know. The Ottomans, too. I have a lot of trouble with the Ottomans, too. Their navy is, like, only rivaled by the um, British. I don't know if that's historically correct, but... They they usually focus on navy. Navy power. In my experience. Here we go. A little reinforced here. So we'll just keep the army here since we don't really have anything to... Well, Petersburg. No, I'll keep them there another turn. <laughs> I hate it when they do that. They move it deep into your territory after being friends for like... Just a couple minutes. <laughs> Takes so long when you try to befriend them first for you to get in the, into their territory. I have such a hard time doing that. All right. So that's reinforced now. So everything's decently reinforced. You just never want to have like a open spot. You know, you don't have to really secure everything. So now we've got enough that I can move up into Moscow. And it'll take another turn to get enough troops to take Petersburg. They are low level, so technically I could try attacking. And it would probably be a decent attack. But it really isn't worth doing waves on when somebody doesn't have fortresses. Sometimes you have to 
you have to take the extra toll to take down forts and expect to have to, you know, repeatedly attack it. If there's no forts, you should always aim for a one, you know, one battle win because it's always going to be the best option. All right. So there we go. And that's 10 minutes, but I'll do another turn. So this turn, I'm going to leave them in Petersburg since I don't need them anywhere, anywhere else, them being my attack army. And I'm just going to reinforce Petersburg. Actually, you know what? It's another step I've been skipping here. You want to get your main territories that you expect to have to produce out of. You want to get those territories up to the latest technology. You never want to be stuck in a territory that can't produce good troops. So now we've got not enough to defend the territory, which is why I'm going to leave my attack army there. But next turn, I'm just basically going to fortify that. And that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching.